I think that nowadays Fostex is a really not well-known brand. It's quite different from the past. And I remember that the Fostex is well known for its headphone like the Fostex T50RP. But I think right now it's not really popular anymore. But hello and welcome to Everson Review. And this is my review for their maybe their reviving again their product which is the Fostex TE02N. And first of all, thank you for Mr. Home Audio for providing me with this review unit. And just like usual, I will break down this review from the build fit, frequency response, sound, and comparison. When it comes to build quality, I believe there's not a lot of thing that I could say about this. I am, it's quite, it's looking cheap. It feels cheap. Uh, it's all made of plastic, but the nozzle part is quite big and quite strange. It's like this. It's not like filter or mesh. It's really different from the other items that I've tried. Um, but here's the unique thing that it has IPX rating actually. So it has double IPX rating. It's IPX5 and IPX7. So IPX5 actually means it protects against water jets and IPX7 means it you can submerge this IM into water uh, up to three feet deep in 30 minutes. So yeah, it's a waterproof IM, but even if I know that, I still say that the build quality looks and feels quite cheap. And the cable itself, it also feels quite cheap. Just look at this jack. Okay, everything about it, except the IPX rating, feels actually quite cheap. When it comes to ergonomics, I'm gonna be honest with you from the start that actually I couldn't use any of its stock ear tips because I simply couldn't get the fit. So I'm using this PinFit CP100 to help me get the proper fit and proper isolation. If not, I couldn't really get the base from this IM. So using the PinFit CP100, actually, it feels quite nice in my ears like this. It feels secure and it doesn't uh, totally isolate, I believe. But the overall fit and also ergonomics is pretty great. Frequency response wise, I need to tell you that this is a raw frequency response, it is non-compensated, so yeah. That being said, I feel that this is the literally flattest frequency response in this price range. Although you can feel that there's a little added trouble around this part, but yeah, this is no way a DF neutral I am because it's lacking that pin again around 3k around this part, so yeah. This is somehow still quite neutral-ish with some added trouble for me. Okay, before I get into the sound, I need to say take this review with a grain of salt because I'm using primarily the SpinFit CP100 for my daily um, ear tips for this IM specifically. Because no matter what kind of its stock ear tips that I've tried, it doesn't really give me a proper isolation. So I don't see. I simply cannot hear the bass when I'm using uh, the stock ear tips. So I'm using this Spinfit CP100 for this review, and I'm using my iBaso DX160 for my primary source. And this IM, it's not really hard to drive. So if you are using your phone, I think that's okay too. And when it comes to the tonality of this IM, I simply could categorize this as somehow relatively neutral to bright IM. The main characteristic of this IM is definitely neutral with a little bit of spice around its treble area. So when you hear the bass, it's just the bass that is exist. And I need to tell you this, that if you don't really get a proper isolation, the bass will simply vanish. It's, it will be not there. Like when I'm using its uh, stock ear tips, I simply couldn't hear the bass. And using this Spinfit CP100 definitely give me a better perception of the bass. But nevertheless, it's definitely not for bass head. Because it, the quantity of the bass is so... Uh, it's just there. The bass is just there. It's not really punchy. It's not really in your face. It's not anything I couldn't really say a lot about this bass. It's just a simply bass that is there. And then going to the mid-range, the mid-range is actually quite balanced when you, when I'm talking about the upper mid-range and lower mid-range. So when you hear male or female vocal, I feel that those two uh, genre are quite good with this Fostex TEO2N. Uh, but, but here's the thing, because of that treble peak around the 6K, 
it will emphasize some of the sibilance in some songs, especially when it comes to female vocal or some badly recorded male vocal. For example, take Galway Girl from Ed Sheeran. Just right from the beginning, I already hear a sibilant coming from uh, that that song using this Fostec TE-02N. But I should say that there's something about this sibilance that doesn't really bother me. I just felt okay, there's sibilance, but it doesn't really bother me so much. Uh, maybe it's just my tolerance level. And then talking about the treble, yes, it's a little bit pushed. You can really hear that the symbols and also some of the S pronunciation of the vocal it's a little bit pushed uh, more than the relatively neutral bass and mid-range area. So yeah, it's kind of neutral-ish to a uh, bright IM for me overall for the tonality. It won't be for everyone, I know. If, especially if you are a bass head, you will not find the bass here. And if you are, maybe you like to hear some clear vocal, you can get that here. But with some little spice of that, uh, trouble pick there so you get a little bit more of that S pronunciation in some songs. And the technicality of this IM, I could say that it's quite decent I, I think for this price point. It's a little bit more detailed than Stan Shim Tanya and The Blonde but it's not really uh, that great either. It's just a little bit better because of that uh, relatively neutral sounding tonality from this Fostex TE O2N. And yes, usually I am with this kind of tonality because there's no pushed bass or no overly pushed mid-range. You can hear everything clearly with a good detail and the bass is never bloated or too, or too slow maybe for some songs. No, you just get a proper detail and you get a decent detail retrieval from this IM. But it's not, and the soundstage actually, it's, yeah, it's okay for this price. I wouldn't say it's totally cramped. I, uh, but here's the thing, I only feel that it sounds uh, only two-dimensional. It's not really three-dimensional in the soundstage and imaging. But I think that, yeah, it's just decent in technicality. And when it comes to comparison, I, I think I don't need to compare them too much with the Blonde BL-03 or the Tanshim Tanya because those two are really different. Those two are definitely much warmer and also slower and also more uh, smooth and also soothing compared to this relatively neutral Fostex TE O2N. So I will compare them with the IM that I also consider to be a little bit neutral at low price points such as this Moondrop Quarks. But comparing these two, they are a little bit different. I should say that they are both uh, somehow rel relatively neutral. But the Moondrop Quarks, I feel that the bass, especially the mid bass, I can hear that better. I can hear that uh, more punchy bass coming from this Moondrop Quarks. And also the treble area, it's somehow more smooth and not as pushed as this Fostex TE O2N. But the detail retrieval and also the overall resolution is uh, not as good as this Fostex TE O2N. So the Fostex TE O2N, this IM is actually clearer and more neutral somehow in my perception when it comes to music. But uh, the only caveat is you hear that See, uh, push treble almost everywhere so especially in the S pronunciation of the words and also that symbol area and some of the instruments that coming from the treble frequency so I think that's all for me yeah if you like somehow a neutral ish I am and you don't mind a little bit sibilance here and there uh, I should say that you need to try them because it's maybe it's a unique I am for its price point let's talk about the pros first it's a pros definitely having an IM that is waterproof and it has IPX rating, IPX5 and IPX7 and also the it's a really unique characteristic uh, neutral IM uh, and also when it comes to the cons hmm, I think that you will always see that this IM looks and feels cheap it's made of plastic, the cable is thin like this and also you will always hear that uh, sibilance part. But I think that's all. I should say that even though I say a lot about the sibilance in this IM, but I don't really get, uh, I'm not really bothered by it as much as I thought. So you maybe need to try this if you feel that the Moondrop Quarks 
you like the neutral-ish kind of the moon drop quartz but you want more analytical sounding I am but you have low budget okay I think that's all for me if you have any question please write down in the comments below and see you next time bye bye